For King's video, I'm going to talk about the difference between taking the derivative of ln x versus taking the derivative of ln of absolute value of x. There is a technical detail, so let's pay attention to that. And to do so, let me just ask you guys a question right here first. Suppose I'm going to define f of x to be ln x. And let me ask you guys this. Based on this, what's f prime of negative 2? Well, if you say the answer to this is negative 1 half, unfortunately, this is actually not correct. Because we cannot even plug in negative 2 into the original function. And of course, we are keeping everything real in this video. Ln of a negative number does not have any real value. It does have some complex value, but we are not talking about complex number here. So keep that in mind. Therefore, this right here, it's not even a legit question in the first place. And let me just show you guys the graph to illustrate what I'm saying. Let's graph ln x. And the graph for that looks like this, just this portion. And this is f of x equals to ln x. And of course, let's talk about the domain of the function. We always should pay attention to the domain. And in this case, x can only be greater than 0. So that's pretty much it. Therefore, here is the deal. When people say, let's take the derivative of ln x, and the answer is 1 over x, we have to pay attention to, since this portion, right, the original function, has a restriction, x has to be greater than 0, we also have to make sure that this right here, x has to be greater than 0. So, you see that earlier when I asked you to plug in negative 2, if I plug in here, if you get just negative one half. But you are making a technical mistake because originally there's nothing in the graph. So of course you cannot even talk about derivative at all. And by the way, the domain of the derivative is either the same as the original domain or smaller than the domain of the original. Because of course, this right here is x greater than zero. And in this case, one of x, the derivative domain right here, it's the same as the original. Sometimes, you may have a function, but if you differentiate that, the domain of the derivative is actually smaller. For example, the absolute value of x, it's not differentiable as zero, so you lose zero in the derivative of the absolute value. All right, so that's pretty much it. And <laughs> that's pretty much the answer, right? Now let's take a look of this right here. And I will do the same thing for you guys, but this time, let's use the graph first. We are graphing absolute value of x inside of the ln. And how can we do that? Depends if you want to use the piecewise definition. I think I'll show you guys that right here real quick. ln of absolute value of x. This right here, it's the same as saying ln of just x if the inside, if the x is greater than 0, right? this part will be the same as that part. So you can just go ahead and do that right here. They are the same thing. But this time, because of the absolute value, x gets to be negative, because absolute value is the most powerful thing. It changes any negative dots, negative numbers, to be on positive. So if you ever feel negative, just take your absolute values to yourself, then you'll be on positive. Anyway, this right here, Absolute value of x is negative x like this if x is less than 0. And by the way, ln of 0 is never defined, so you just don't have 0 right here. And for this part, it's just the left-right reflection, so you actually have this portion right here. This is the graph for ln of absolute value of x. And I will just write down the domain right here real quick as well. The domain for this function is all real value except, so I just put on but, x cannot be 0. So there's only one number we cannot use, namely 0. And then I will ask you guys the same question right here. If this time I'm asking you guys, suppose, let me just say g, let g of x be ln with the absolute value 
this time. Then, what's the answer to g prime of negative 2? If you look at the graph, this time, when x is negative 2, it's somewhere right here. Because this is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and then plug into ln, you get 0, so that's why this is negative 1. Negative 2 is right here. And if you would like, you can see that. You can draw the, draw the tangent line right here. Right? And the slope of this tangent line is precisely negative 1 half. And this is actually the jet. So this right here is the answer. And now let me show you guys how to take the derivative of ln of absolute value of x. And you have to keep in mind the domain. And this time, the domain of the original and the domain of the derivative are actually the same. We don't lose any number in the domain of the derivative, right? Only when you have the pointy thing with vertical asymptote, vertical tangent line, vertical tangent line situation, you may have smaller domain for the derivative. But anyway, let's get back to taking the derivative of ln of absolute value of x. Here is the deal. ln of absolute value of x, right? The derivative of ln is just 1 over whatever you have inside. This right here, you technically should put down absolute value of x. And then you are going to ask yourself, what is the derivative of absolute value of x? Because you have to use the chain loop, right? And the derivative of absolute value of x is precisely absolute value of x over x. And now I know some of you guys are going to ask why, so I will show you guys real quick right here. Suppose you have y is equal to absolute value of x, which is negative x if x is less than 0, and this is x if x is greater than or equal to 0, right? All right, y prime, which is the derivative of that, I will first write it down as this, which is the derivative of negative x is negative 1, the derivative of x is 1, and this is the situation that the domain of the derivative it's smaller than the domain of the original. Because absolute value of x is not differentiable at 0. So right here, I will just put down x less than 0, and x has to be greater than 0. No more 0 right here. And if you want to see the detailed explanation, you can check out my other video. So you can do like this. But this is precisely absolute value of x over x. And this is the usual way to write it. Some people can write it as x over absolute value of x. They are actually the same thing, all right? And once again, you can check out my other video for that. So, in fact, I will just write this down as absolute value of x over x. And you can just check this out real quick. This expression doesn't lose zero, so it matches with this right here. And if you have x is positive number, that's a positive 17. Absolute value of positive 17 over 17 you get positive 1. It fits this. If x is negative 5, on the top, absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Over negative 5, you get negative 1, and which fits that. So you see this is actually an expression for the derivative of absolute value of x. So that's what we have. And guess what? They cancel each other out, huh? That's why I want to put the absolute value of x on the top right here. And in the end, we just have 1 over x. Yes, well, so this is really cool, isn't it? In the end, I will put this down for you guys to just like end this right here. Derivative of ln x, this is 1 over x, but you have to remember x has to be greater than 0. So this is the first part over there. And for the second one, this is also 1 over x because of this right here. But x can be anything except for 0. You get to use negative number in this situation, right? So hopefully this right here helps. There is a difference between this and that, and hopefully you guys also see how to take the derivative of absolute value of x in this manner. Anyway, hope you guys like this video, and if you guys do like this video, please subscribe and maybe share this video with your classmates, your teacher, whoever loves math. That's it.